So what could make the Ricoh GR3 even a better camera than it already is? Let's explore what could be the improvements for the successor of the Ricoh GR3 that I guess will be named the Ricoh GR4. I want to make an effort to fill this wishlist with things that are plausible and that may actually be possible to pack in the Ricoh GR4. If we start to crazy and ask for a full frame sensor, some 4K video features, it wouldn't make any sense. The idea is to take into account today's technology and keeping in mind the philosophy of Ricoh for the GR line of cameras. The design over the years did not change a lot and I guess they are definitely not going to make it very different going forward. It will stay a very powerful APS sensor pocketable everyday camera. I will go through another things that are the most important to me, the must-haves and also coupled with what I think are the most likely to become true. To kick things off, my first would be a faster autofocus. Um, I think I won't hurt anybody if I say it, but the autofocus on the Ricoh GR3 is definitely uh, not very fast. It is one of the slowest you can find on a recent mirrorless camera and it was released in 2019. So when I was writing the script for this video, I honestly thought that it was released at least one or two years prior to that. Nevertheless, in such a short amount of time between 2019 and 2023, we have seen further improvements in autofocus technologies from other brands, first implementing them in their flagship cheap, bigger cameras, but then rolling them out for their cheaper and smaller cameras. My guess is that Ricoh can also improve on that while keeping the same form factor. We don't need something crazy fast like the Sony cameras, for example, but a little bit more snappiness, more confidence in a high-paced environment like the street would be very welcomed by the whole GR community. There are currently workarounds on the GR3, like snap shooting to compensate for slow AF, but then it's another discussion. Snap focus is basically manual focusing set at the distance you choose. I also sometimes use the touch AF plus release that can deliver good results since the shutter will be only released when the camera finds a point of focus. I think it can work better than the shutter autofocus sometimes, but yeah, an overall faster, a bit more snappy and more reliable autofocus is needed, I think. In second position, I would place the battery life. On the GR3, even with first party batteries, you run out of them pretty quickly. If you plan to shoot over the whole day you have to bring some spare ones with you but that's actually not the thing that annoys me the most when your day of shooting is planned you leave the house with a full battery and a few spares and you're good to go the act of changing batteries is not that cumbersome and the batteries themselves are tiny and light but what really frustrates me more is when i sometimes don't plan to shoot and suddenly i want to go out and i'm thinking oh i should bring my rico with me to uh, grab a few shots, my Rico that is not plugged into the charger. So when I turn it on, I'm sad to see that the battery indicator is already in red. For me, it is part of the essence of a GR camera to be spontaneous about your shooting, bringing it with you on an unexpected walk or outing with friends or just by yourself. It is an everyday kind of opportunistic camera. So noticing with despair that your GR is already almost out of battery when you have that little spark of inspiration, that little spark of motivation can be really uh, frustrating sometimes. I know you could walk around by being more disciplined with charging your camera every time you come back at the same time you put the SD card in the computer let's say but having the experience with my Sony or even my Fuji actually when I don't shoot a tremendous amount I can randomly turn them on and they will always have at least a little bit of battery left to uh, keep me going for I don't know a few hundred shots so a bigger battery life please Rico we all want that and it seems pretty feasible the third one is also part of my must-have for the next GR4, but I understand that one can be pretty uh, difficult to pack in. I would love to have a tilted screen for the next Ricoh GR. Since the camera has no viewfinder, it can sometimes be very difficult to see what you are shooting when the sun is very strong and you can get rid of a big reflection on your screen. The GRs are also tiny cameras with which you can be very creative with where you position the camera, down on the floor, up in the air, in some small spaces and so on. But when you do that, again, it becomes very hard to see what you're doing and checking that your composition is all right. You just have to press the shutter and pray but when you're facing a more static scene it's not really a big problem because you can have several tries make sure your composition is all right but when you're in a more time sensitive scenario where you really want that particular subject in your frame but he's walking by you may only have one chance to get the shot so having a tilty screen to help us compose can be a huge difference now i totally understand it can be a difficult one to uh, implement in the next Ricoh GR adding a unit to make a tilty screen can take a lot of space that they would either have to add but i don't think they will want to make the camera bigger 
or you have to dig deeper inside to make more space. Maybe that second option is possible, I don't know. With more modern and smaller components, they can tick all the boxes in terms of performance, keeping the IBs and all that, and still have this additional space to uh, make the tilty screen possible. Because what we really don't want is Rico making uh, everything possible to uh, put the tilty screen, but ending up with something too flimsy, too fragile, that could be another entry point for some dust or water to get into the camera. Fourth, I think a faster shutter or electronic shutter is much needed for street photography. Here I'm not talking about the possibility to go at higher shutter speed than it already goes. It is already plenty fast and it has a built-in ND to help keeping the aperture where you want. So here I'm talking about the time it takes for the camera to take a shot and then be ready to take the next one. When you take a picture, the screen turns black and as of now, this period when the screen is black and you cannot take the following shot is pretty long. I know we are talking about splits of a second, but that can be the difference that separate a good shot and a great shot. With a shorter dead time, let's call it that way, you can be more likely to take the decisive moment when all the elements of your frame align and make for a stronger, more impactful composition. Or you can be ready to capture someone suddenly changing its facial expression to turn a boring snap into a great street photo. I think it has to do with the processor, reading speed and all that kind of thing. And I think it's not crazy to believe that in four years we made enough progress to make the processor reading writing speed fast enough to create almost an uninterrupted shooting experience with a constant LCD feedback and I think that could be a real game changer. Next online would be the addition of frame lines and more grid option for the LCD screen. First the GR has this mode where you can digitally crop at 35 and 50 mm. I found myself using the 35 mm sometimes but not so much the 50 mm because I think it's a bit too cropped in and you're losing too much resolution. But anyway, the problem when using this crop mode is that your file is baked in and you cannot revert to the original 28 mm. It is almost like the sensor is turning off for this part that are not used. With the addition of frame lines, you could shoot all the time at 28mm and see what 35 and 50mm would look like. It is certainly an easier turnaround that making possible to revert back to the 28mm, even though that would be actually the best solution. I don't know if that could be possible with Lightroom and how they process the raw images if they can make an arrangement on that but anyway more frame lens option would be very helpful and I guess they are really easy to implement since it would be only software and actually more than these 35 and 50 millimeter crop I would love having frame lens to see what a 16 by 9 a 2x1, those kind of more cinematic crops would look like. With wider field of view, I love throwing this kind of very large panoramic kind of crop. And I actually got a subscriber once telling me in the comments that he put some tape on the screen to see what a 2.35 by 1 crop would look like. I think it could be a great and easy addition to help us composing our images or challenge ourselves to see differently than the original 3 by 2 crop. Now we'll enter the less plausible and less important stuff that I would still appreciate to see coming in the Ricoh GR4 and yes, a viewfinder of course. Going back to what I said before, it can be tricky sometimes to see what you're doing in broad daylight. A small EVF could really help in this kind of scenario, but I think it's quite difficult to implement. Looking at the camera body, I see nowhere it could fit, but maybe they can sell an electronic viewfinder as an additional accessory. Today you can already find plenty of viewfinder that you can fit in the cold shoe, but those are optical ones. It would be nice to have one that connect electronically to the body, so they would need to change the cold shoe for a hot shoe, but it doesn't seem impossible to do. I think that option would be the best because it gives the choice to the user, so no one is really losing there. The ones that don't need an EVF, they can just skip on that and they would not be penalized by a change of design. And the ones who really want to use a, an EVF, they can just get one as an extra accessory. Let's talk about video and uh, you'll see that it's not only about adding new features, but maybe sometimes removing some. If a major improvement cannot be realized while keeping the same design and form factor and performance, I think they could just get rid of that feature now. Honestly, record the video feature, I think are just there to tick a box but they are almost unusable, they are, they are pointless. So if no major improvement is possible, I think they could just get rid of it. It would make the menus cleaner and at least I wouldn't be really sad to see the video features uh, going away. Now about the weather setting, and I know this one can be a big debate in the GR community or actually the non-GR community. I know some people are not getting a GR due to this uh, dust issue thing and I don't know if I'm a very lucky person, but I have not been suffering a lot from this problem. I think I may have only one dust particle that starts to show at really high apertures and I need to be photographing a very plain surface to see it appears. I think that the lens has to be designed that way and 
and gives them no choice to abandon a complete weather sealed camera. Probably they can improve a little bit by uh, screwing a bit more here and there, make everything a bit more tight to uh, prevent much dust or water to get into the camera. But I think we have to forget about the possibility of having a completely weather sealed Ricoh GR4. To me, it is not a big problem. It is a tiny camera, so if you want to shoot under the rain, it is easy to carry an umbrella and operate the camera one-handed. You can also fit it in your pocket between the pictures you take to make it even safer, but it is anyway not a camera that you will have hanging around a strap while climbing a mountain under the rain. Next online, I still want Rico to uh, release two versions of the GR, like we've seen for the GR3 and GR3X. It was such a smart move, giving the option to the users to get a 28mm or a 40mm equivalent for length. I never had the chance to use the GR3X so far but I'm burning to try it. I tried to reach out to a Rico to see if they would lend me a copy of the GR3X to try but uh, without success so far. I know a lot of you guys want to see me use the, the camera and give my opinion on it but yeah the fight is not over and uh, if I get my hands on one I will definitely uh, do a plenty of videos about it. But coming back to what I wish for the GR4, I hope Rico will release both versions at the same time because I know that uh, if both were out at the time I got mine, I would probably have gone for the GR3X. I feel a bit more comfortable at 40mm. I am basically not a fan of using wide angle, but having owned and used the GR3 28mm for years now, I found my groove and I like it very much now. I just want Rico to be a bit more fair to their users and putting out the two versions out to the world at the same time. If not possible, be more transparent about the release of the GR4X so users that are a bit more tight financially can wait a little longer for the release of the GR4X if not released at the same time. I believe that the ones who are a bit more comfortable financially and don't really count when it comes to their hobbies or when it comes to photography, they will probably get both anyway so I think it wouldn't be really detrimental to Ricoh like uh, financial wise so yeah it would be nice from them to make an effort on that side. Now I will end up with two last wishes that I know are really unlikely to become true and first would be to have a higher resolution sensor. With that the 50 minute crop mode would become more relevant. I'm very happy with the 24 megapixel that we have now on the GRs and never really found myself hoping for more resolution or more sharpness. Simply that if Rico can fit a higher resolution sensor without um, being detrimental to the performance, to the speed in the menu and all that, it would be a nice to have and it would make the 50 millimeter crop mode a bit more usable. Last one is pretty much impossible but let's be a little bit over board and dream a little bit. Uh, lens opening at f2 would be just awesome. That extra bokeh, especially for the 28mm version, would open doors to extra creativity and would bring an extra touch to those wide angle shots. When having more bokeh at 28mm, you still have to be conscious about your composition and background since the elements out of focus are still recognizable. It's not a smoosh of bokeh not adding to the composition, but when you see your subject detaching itself from the foreground and background at such a wide aperture, it just creates a special feeling. Now I know that with such a tiny body and this uh, special lens design that has to retract and extend itself, it will be very very hard to fit in the extra pieces of glass to make this f2 aperture possible, but let's dream big. This last one is a if Santa Claus exists kind of wish, but apart from that I'm really happy with the lens as it is right now. It is plenty sharp, the micro contrast, the color rendition are good, everything is pretty much at the top. If they can improve on all of these aspects incrementally, it would be nice, but definitely not an absolute must have. And what would be your wishlist for the upcoming Ricoh GR4? You can drop a comment with your wishlist and let's discuss that in the comment section. I hope you found this video interesting and it was a nice exercise for me to um, try to come up with ideas of what is possible and what may actually happen for the Ricoh GR4 while also remembering everything that is already so good with the GR3. Looking forward to read you in the comments and have an open discussion about what could be nice on the Ricoh GR4 and yeah, let's catch up in the next one. Bye!